Chances are, if you clicked on this video, you're in the market for an Ableton Live MIDI controller, and that's what I have in front of me, the Akai APC Key 25 Mark II. It came out a few months ago, and Akai had sent this over to me, and I'm just now getting to a review for this keyboard. Now, just to be clear, no money exchange hands, and Akai has no expectations of what this video is gonna be about. In fact, they don't even know that I'm making this video right now. Now, this has gotta be one of the cheapest offerings on the market for an actual Ableton Live session controller. You have a five by eight grid that controls clip launching in Ableton, and a 25 key keyboard. That's velocity sensitive as well. The buttons are not velocity sensitive, so that's something to keep in mind. I have a brand new session of Ableton loaded, and I'm just gonna bring in, say, Pigments into the first channel. Pigments is from Arturia, if you are unaware, and I can immediately play. And it automatically shows that it's selected right here for these pads that are dimly lit red. So that means I can start playing right away, or I can start recording if I just tap a button. Tapping again cuts off the clip, so it starts looping. So, as you can see, I just made this clip real fast. And luckily, I played it relatively in time, so that's good. Now you have transport controls right here for starting and pausing. And you also have record button as well, which can be used for overdubbing, which is really nice. So for instance, if I want to overdub this onto that exact clip, I can just do that. Oops, let it go wrong. There we go. I can tap it again and overdub stops happening on the session view. Let's grab another instrument, like the Mini Freak. So same thing, and record. to go. So as you can see, it's very fast, quick, easy way to be able to get kind of a hands-on experience with Ableton. The knobs take it a step further as well. So you, as you can see right here, it says knob control and knob control can go from volume, pan, send, and device. And device is where it gets really interesting. Obviously volume is whatever's happening on the screen. So as you can see, my first track is now currently being adjusted volume-wise. But if I wanted to control actual elements in the device, then you would go to the device. So you hold shift and go device. And now I can control stuff that is in say the mini freak. So for instance, we can go macros. If I click this little arrow, bring out configure, then whatever I touch, I can then map. So there we go. And then touch this and map this. So now, Great, right? Now, if I wanna actually record that automation on the clip, I have to select this button right here, which is automation arm. Now, if I play, it still does not record, but I have to overdub. So if I hit the record button on here, it'll start uh, recording that automation. There we go. So very quick, easy, hands-on experience to be able to get stuff going with just this small little interface right here. I should talk about the actual ports as well. All it is is one USB port. That's it. You plug it in, Ableton should automatically find it. And, and you, the way you know is seeing this box that's around things. If I unplug this, the box should go away. Box is gone, right? Plug this back in. Blue box is back, just like that. So technically should be plug and play. You shouldn't have to mess with anything right there. If you do have an issue, you can go into the, the link tempo MIDI section and then uh, start adding stuff right here if you need to adjust it. What it is missing though in the back is a sustain port. So you can't 
hook up a sustain pedal, unfortunately, into this MIDI keyboard, which is kind of weird, honestly, because like their um, MPK mini variety right here, sustain port, and this is like, you know, within the same price range. A little strange they didn't include it. They do have a sustain button right here, which is actually kind of fascinating. You know, that's kind of a different way of approaching it. And sometimes I do like to just hold a button to sustain stuff, or if I don't want to take the time to hook up a sustain pedal, that is actually nice to have. So kind of something that the other keyboards don't have really. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, a like, subscribe, and comment below would go a long way. So thank you very much. As you can see, the workflow is pretty streamlined with this box. And obviously I'm still using a mouse and keyboard to control stuff and select things on the screen, which you would do. Um, but if this was hooked up to a laptop, this would actually do a pretty good job. There are some things that are missing though, specifically modulation and pitch wheels. So if you were to pick up, say, an MPK Mini Play, you have this guy to be a pitch bend modulation wheel, and that is missing from the APC line. If you were to get the AP, APK Mini, like that has that same type of deal. If you were to go over to the competition, the Launch Key Mini, this actually has pitch mod wheel type of stuff right here. And it also has a drum grid two by what? Two by eight? Yeah, two by eight. This is probably the most direct competition to the APC key. And it's a good alternative as well because it has like some interesting arpeggiator options and does have a MIDI out right there if that's something that uh, concerns you for some additional studio stuff. Also the pads are velocity sensitive on the, the mini, which is nice. So that is one of the things, the, the pads on the APC key 25 Mark II, they're not velocity sensitive. They're more like gushy, you know, it's like, it feels like buttons that you push in. So you're not getting a drum pad experience. Something like the MPK Mini right here would be better because these pads are actually really good drum pads right here. They're, they would be considerably better than uh, the APC. And I think they're better than the Launch Key Mini from Novation as well. But that ultimately is user preference. And speaking of personal preference, the keys are one of those things where it might be something you enjoy, Maybe not, you might just kind of get by with it, but they are, they're technically generation two keys, so they do have a bit more velocity sensitivity. And yeah, there's no aftertouch, so if that's something that you care about, you know, keep that in mind, no aftertouch. In fact, all of the, the mini key line from Akai has no aftertouch. The launch key mini also does not have aftertouch. And these keys, I think, are slightly worse than the Akai APC. Not that they're bad, in my opinion, but I've seen other people online say that the, the Mini is like the, the worst keys, they're, or they're the least favorite keys out of all of them that they played. I personally don't mind it. I've made some beats with this and I actually really enjoy this setup right here. And also size-wise, what is that? It looks like the Mini wins in terms of size. It's like slightly smaller. It's like a little bit wider, but you know, not as tall. I guess they're about the same. And this feels slightly lighter also. They're probably like a slight di a discrepancy in terms of weight. But the, the APC feels a little bit more chunky. And the build quality does feel slightly better on the APC versus the Launch Key Mini. But if you're new to music production, and especially new to actually playing on a keyboard, you probably wouldn't miss the features that I'm talking about, like a pitch wheel modulation. I think you probably wouldn't even realize it until you actually get a different keyboard that has those and realize the, the benefits. And aftertouch is one of those things where if you don't know why you'd want aftertouch, then it's definitely not something that you need to concern yourself with right now. It's one of those things where if you're more experienced as a keyboardist, then understanding what aftertouch can do to your sounds as you're playing is going to be important. But if you're new, I wouldn't worry about it. This keyboard will be perfectly fine for you. Now I do have the direct cousin of the APC, <laughs> the APC Mini. There's no keys on this one. Now obviously this is an option if you're looking for a uh, uh, Ableton MIDI controller and I would recommend this if you strictly just need pad uh, launch or clip launching abilities because it's a bigger grid, eight by eight, so you get more of a, a, a coverance right there. What I enjoy about this particular box is that if you do have an Ableton push hooked up into your studio and let's say it's on the other side of the studio and you want access to your Ableton clips and launching them, then you have that with this box. You also have that with the APC as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Like if you wanted a, uh, an Ableton clip launcher or a quick little box to adjust things on the other side of your studio that can just ho hook in via USB, then these boxes are actually really great for that. My push two is off to the side on our synth wall and it lives there. So whenever I want to uh, adjust some clips or adjust some settings and all that, the push two is fantastic for that. But I don't really want to like 
take it around or readjust things. I, I like keeping this desk relatively clear for kind of like a, a modular configuration of different pieces of gear that I'm messing with. But I do miss having the direct Ableton Live clip launching control. So the APC line fits that pretty well. However, there is no velocity sensitivity on these pads. And again, they feel more like push buttons. They don't feel like drum pads. So if you're thinking about getting these specifically for the drum pad experience, you will be disappointed. Uh, at least I would be. I'd be very disappointed about it. I think you'd be better off with the Launch Key Mini if you really want something that feels good for the pads, but can also double as an Ableton controller. The MPK Mini pads are better, but this does not control Ableton the same way. These buttons will map to the Ableton devices easily, but you don't have any clip launching capability directly built in to these boards. One final thing about the APC Mini is there is no transport controls on here. So if you want something to be able to start and stop your transport in Ableton, this will not do it. The only one is going to be the APC. And you might be thinking, oh man, I'm missing out on the 8x8 grid. It's actually not that big of a deal because you do have the, the arrows right here to be able to move stuff around. So if you do need to shuffle down, you know, 10 rows or something like that, you can make it happen with this. You can just hold this and start shuffling around essentially. So it's actually pretty slick. Overall, I think this is actually a really good MIDI controller. It does miss some features that I would prefer to have like a modulation wheel, but I could definitely get by with it and the small compact nature of it, like you could easily chuck this into a backpack with your laptop and have a really good controller, you know, really good setup to be able to do some Ableton sessions. What do you think? Drop a comment below. Let me know if you already have this and you have some thoughts, you know, I would love to hear it. I obviously didn't go through all the features and there's other videos out there that you can check out, but really what I wanted to show was like the experience of just making some stuff in a session and uh, seeing how it works, you know? Hopefully you found some useful information. If you do plan on picking up this MIDI controller or any other MIDI controller that's listed below using our affiliate links, greatly helps out the channel. So thank you very much if you do that. And we also prefer Zounds, they're our go-to affiliate. So we recommend Zounds on there. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you would like to see a more dedicated video on the APC Mini, I will consider it if you drop some comments below. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time.